Hi, my name is Idris Olorunimbe. I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Idris left the Federal College Ijaneke in 1995 with his O-level certificate and immediately got admitted into the University of Lagos where he went on to bag his bachelor's degree in law in 2001. Idris would later skip law school to join the public service within the Lagos State Government as Senior Special Assistant to the then Governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Rajifashola, a Senior Advocate of Nigeria. He served here for eight years and subsequently decided to walk the path of entrepreneurship with a strong desire to solve key problems within the entertainment industry. Today, Idris is the CEO of the Temple Group. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Idris. Thank you, Mr. Fab, for having me. All right, man. Um, so you attended the Federal Government College in Ijaniki uh, and subsequently attended the uh, University of Lagos, where you bagged your bachelor's degree in law, yes, which sir. is fantastic. You know, so tell me about those series of events in your childhood uh, that led to you studying law. Well, I think um, for me, law was a natural feat because, I mean, um, I come from a family of lawyers. Um, my father is a retired judge. Um, wow. I have a brother who's a lawyer. I have um, two sisters who are lawyers. Whoa. So, I mean, I, I don't think I had uh, much of a choice. Beautiful. So, um, I know one usually has to go to law school mm -hmm. in Nigeria before you practice. Did you ever go to law school? No, sir. Did you ever practice? No. No. Okay. And, I mean, <laughs> um, I didn't go to law school because by the time I started, Law in University of Lagos. Um, I I got a bit tired of it. Mm. I think the only thing that kept me going was the fact that um, I had been taught early in life that you must finish everything you start. Mm. So I couldn't turn back. But I, if the door had been open, maybe maybe in my third year <laughs> I'd have changed, <laughs> I'd have changed my course. I just <laughs> couldn't um, um, find myself going to the um, Senate or wherever it was to go and collect a form to, to, sure. for change, of course. Afterwards, you worked at some point as a civil servant within the Lagos State Government? Uh, well, as a public servant, not a, a civil public servant. public servant? Yes, sir. All right. So as a public servant, um, what was your role within, within the government? Um, I, uh, my transition into mm -hmm. public service mm -hmm. um, started from um, the campaign of the immediate past governor of Lagos State, uh, Mr. Okay. Babatunde um, Rajiv Ashala SAN, okay. who was and is my boss. Hmm. Um, so he, he campaigned in 2006 and we were part of that campaign. And after he won the election, um, he asked us to serve. So okay. I was one of those who migrated from the campaign office to the government office. Oh, wow. So I served in um, the first four years as um, personal assistant general purpose to him. And then from 2011 to 2015, as Senior Special Assistant um, General Purpose. Amazing. So you left uh, public service? Yes, sir. Um, and eventually set up the Temple Management Company? Yes, sir. At the point of setting up the company, what unique problems uh, was this set up to solve? I have always been interested in entertainment and sports, but I, two, three years ago, um, this wasn't where I thought that I'd be. But in our quest to find what it was that we could do that would um, bring about um, positive change and be um, a disruptor, it was very, very um, easy to find that there was a gap here okay. that we could fill. And so that was how that started. Because I mean, after working with um, BRF or, or GAS, we call him, for about nine or 10 years, there was no way that um, I could use those skills better than to go and do something that would bring about a real shift for good. You mentioned gaps. So what yeah. were these gaps you know, that you created Temple to fill? 
first things first, um, I think with regards to um, talent management, um, there was nobody providing the kind of 360 service in the market that we provide. Okay. So wh what do I mean by 360 service? So <clears throat> there's, um, we have in-house legal, we have um, in-house financial advisory, we have um, the day-to-day -day managers, um, we have, um, we, we, we provide more or less a business and, um, and um, welfare catering service hmm. for our clients. So what happens is that the client's job really is to go and do what is exactly, <laughs> which is what, um, what, what? what the person has been endowed with, because we find that we are all not blessed with the same things. So your unique talent might be to sing, it might be to run, it might be um, all you just want to do is make uh, beats and produce music and so on and so forth. What we do essentially is to um, help you, guide you to the, the, the best decisions okay. and also to help you grow your brand, um, or optimize it, and position it properly and to negotiate your contracts for you so that um, you don't get um, continuously and endlessly shortchanged. Amazing. So still on the subject of your, you know, clientele, mm -hmm. um, you've signed quite a number of prominent, you know, um, artists and, you know, faces within the sports space, within the entertainment circles. And you also partnered, it was recorded, um, that you partnered Jay-Z's Rock Nation. Yes, sir. Um, how does this deal benefit, you know, the clients you have on your roster currently? It's, it's simple. First things first. We do not look at ourselves or see ourselves as a local company. And um, to demonstrate what our intentions are, we've actually um, set up shop in Nairobi for East Africa. Um, we have a full-fledged office. We have an office in Johannesburg as well. Um, the person who leads from um, Nairobi is um, Troy White, extremely um, competent when it comes to matters of um, how to uh, manage and monetize and promote and um, um, get the best out of talent. And out of um, um, South Africa, the division is led by Thibaut Touch, who for me is also one of the soundest minds and um, um, one of the perhaps the greatest influencers on our continent today. We're also going into Francophone in the next 90 days. Um, to set up a full freight office that would work out of Abidjan. So now, what are we doing? We're building a network across of Africa. What does this do for us or for our clients? It means that our clients are not local champions. Hmm. And until we see the, the importance of harnessing all of the markets across the continent, hmm. then we'll continue to build in silos. So, we're, so for, for, for us, our client is not successful until it can be identified with ease in Nairobi, in um, Uganda, in Johannesburg, or Namibia, and also in Francophone. So the, 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 the biggest thing I think that um, um, entertainment and sports needs to thrive is population. Now, the, the, the Americas where we're so interested in has a population of over 300 million people. Mm -hmm. But Africa has over 1.3 billion. So it tells you what we can do if we penetrate. Mm. And so that's the, that's, that's the idea. With the relationship with Rock Nation, it was um, one that was built out of necessity because we, want, we would like to be the bridge for the African talent to match their foreign counterparts. And in doing that, we had to find someone who had the, the same ethos as us and who would be able to um, essentially um, um, deliver on whatever mandates we had. Mm -hmm. And in, on, on their part as well, they needed um, a, a partner out here who understood that this was serious business and who also understood the importance of um, simple things like uh, monitoring what your obligations are. The Temple Management Company in August 2016 announced the formation of a 360 management company which is poised to bridge the gap between the Nigerian corporate space and the burgeoning creative and entertainment sector. At a time of rising global recognition and demand, 
for the work of Nigerian creative talent, the company is also on a mission to continually improve on content, bridge the gulf between local talent and their foreign counterparts in line with international best practices, with Idris, of course, at the helms. I also read something that got me curious about your affiliation, you know, with a number of international music industry icons, L.A. Reid, Pharrell, Jamie Foxx, P. Diddy, even. What's your affiliation, uh, affiliation with these ones? Um, by, the, by virtue of the relationship that we have with Rock Nation, we have indirect relationships with all of these guys okay. that you have named. But I mean, you're doing a, an amazing job with, with you. Temple. And of Thank course, you. you've gotten a lot of recognition, a lot of nods, a lot of accolades for the work that you're doing. Tell me, what do these accolades, nods, you know, recognition, what do they truly mean to you? Um, it means that uh, we need to work harder. It means that there's an expectation on us because um, they say that the reward for hard work is more work. And um, the truth also is that um, when you, you uh, it's easier to climb to the top than to stay on top. So it just, it, it actually um, uh, increases the demand okay. on us to continue to push the limits. All right. And pushing the limits is what you always do. That's what um, so do, yes. challenges you mentioned, and we'll come to that shortly, but you mm. also mentioned hard work. Um, off camera, we're just talking about when you were in government mm. and you didn't have a holiday in years. Mm. Um, and eventually, of course, you went on holiday. Mm -hmm. There's this much talk about work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Some people believe it's achievable. Some people believe it's a myth. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, is it achievable or is it a myth? Uh, well, um, the, the, I think the answer lies in, the, um, in what you do. Okay. I've heard people say that um, if, you, if you do what you love, mm -hmm. you don't have to work for a day longer in your life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, is the passion um, and your interest in what you're doing. Like, I mean, I don't think I can imagine you on an island anywhere in the world where you'll not be thinking about um, the, the next interview or the next publication and how the ambience would have just been perfect for you to have sat down with somebody with who is under 40 yeah. who is a CEO. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, work never really leaves you. Mm -hmm. So what is, I think what is important is finding what you love, what your passion is. Mm -hmm. And once you find that, you'll find the job both challenging and relaxing at the same time. So challenges now. Um, since you launched the company, what are those key challenges? Um, that you've had to overcome to make the strides you've made so far? Um, for, for I think that to say that we've overcome would um, be an exaggeration because um, we, we are still on this journey. We're still on, in, in the very early stages of this journey, if I may add. We're only one and a half years old. Um, but, I mean, the challenges are surplus. Um, one of it is that um, the, the talents themselves, in a way, are uh, used to certain things that um, we will frown against. Mm. One of it is that um, talents generally sell themselves short. And our model is based on the commission. So if you are selling yourself short, it means that my commission will be short. Mm. So, and um, the talents also, um, I don't know if it's a societal problem or what I can attribute it to, but. We, we tend to owe a lot of people a lot of things. So in the quest to repay, there's a general um, blackmail as to what you should charge me. Hmm. And in a way, I'm, I'm also guilty of it because um, in the past, I've had um, friends that I have in the industry do things for me that they should have been paid for, but they did as favors. So, I mean, that... Um, that is biting us now because um, there's along the entire value chain, there's somebody who has helped somebody in the beginning, there's somebody who maybe helped me uh, when I had nowhere to sleep, there's somebody who was the one who first played my music on radio. Mm -hmm. And so when those people come to come and ask for favors, they cannot say no. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it's, 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 it's difficult to find a balance. So, for instance, if today, Jay-Z announces a tour. Immediately it is announced and tickets open. It might not take up to five minutes before it's sold, sold out. out. Mm -hmm. Now, some people are going to buy and resell. Mm. <laughs> because 
there is a demand for it. Of course. Now, what happens when we open in Nigeria? Tickets are to be sold. Just go to any celebrity's hand, handle on Instagram or Twitter and go and look at what the comments are. If it's not Baba, give me a free ticket. Is Mama, eh, I'm lawyer, I want to come, give me free. All right, so based on what you've just said, um, would you say the fans need to be educated and is Temple poised, you know, to fill that gap? The, the truth of the matter is that um, what we know a lot of times is um, shaped by um, what is fed us. And uh, with this regard, um, the fans probably do not understand their importance to their talents. When your talent is able to afford that mansion or that lifestyle, it's because of the support that you give him. Mm -hmm. And the support comes from doing it with your heart and with your money. So if you say you love, um, say you love Jeff Ako, for instance, then you should pay for his music. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't download it for free. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go and um, get it from one of these. Um, or share it. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know? Because mm -hmm. you owe it to him that he succeeds. And the success comes from numbers. So you like, um, say, Juliet Ibrahim as an actress, then you should go to the cinema to watch the movies that she's in. Mm -hmm. Pay your money. You should buy the DVDs or subscribe to any of the platforms that show the movies and watch it so that money can end in her pocket. Mm -hmm. If not, I mean, um, she, she, she or they will just continue to um, float without having the real tangible financial success. All right, so there was something I was going to quickly just ask you. A publication mm. uh, said that you're one of the godfathers mm. of Maven Records. <laughs> I mean, from a few things you've said today, mm. I can imagine how, but how so? Um, I think a godfather might be um, the wrong um, title to give me. I, I went to school with um, Michael Collins Ajiri a.k.a. Don Jazzy. He was in Janiki. Oh, wow. um, he was my junior by a few years. And um, I've always been a fan of his mastery of uh, music. Mm -hmm. So Jazzy is my friend and my brother. And um, from time to time, he seeks my counsel. And with the little experience that I have, I would advise him on what I thought he should do or shouldn't do. Um, also, as a fan, I watch him from um, behind, uh, from the sidelines and I see what he's doing right and what he's doing wrong, and um, he, he doesn't mind to be criticized. So, I mean, so based on that, based on my personal relationship with him, and um, the fact that um, he has um, very high regards for me, and I have the highest regards for him as well, it's easy for people to call it whatever. Okay, beautiful. So back to, you know, subject of leadership. I mean, you're the CEO here, and you're yes, the sir. leader. Well, how would you describe your leadership style? Well, um, my leadership style, I think, um, is um, a, a mixture of um, things that I took from those who I consider to be my mentors. Um, and one of the things that I think I've been most blessed with in life is um, people within close, close proximity that I would like to be like. So, um, for instance, uh, I have a few men within who are maybe between 10 and 20 years older than me that I take one thing or another from. One of them is the chairman of Temple uh, Management Company, the group chairman, uh, Mr. Tunde Folawio. Another one is an investor and a director, Mr. Jibola Abudu. I mean, of course, I cannot um, overemphasize the influence of um, um, Oga. And there's also Mr. Lawal. So in all of these men, there's one thing that they all have in common. They are humble. Hmm. So for me, it was one of the things that um, I had to imbibe by hook or by crook. Amazing. So my leadership is by followership. All right, amazing. <laughs> Tell me quickly about your failings or, and failures as a leader. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes um, I think the biggest um, thing might be the fact that um, I can be too passionate. 
when that happens, um, it makes me very, very irritable mm. because, um, and um, it probably also heightens my expectations. Mm. And when that sets in, uh, you cannot falter. It's unacceptable. It, it's good because it helps to push people. But it's also bad because um, not everybody can be the same. All right, tell me, so what values are important uh, to you and your firm? I think one of the very first things that um, we can know with you on is um, integrity. It's very, very important because we are trustees. So basically what happens is that when a client comes in and agrees to sign to us, the person is donating his rights to us. Mm -hmm. So we must ensure that we keep that trust with the best of intentions and with the best of our abilities. So we, we, honesty is very, very important on both sides. So there must be transparency. Yeah. They, I mean, hard work is also a given because, you know, um, um, they say there's no food for the lazy man. Even in regards to the talent, the more you practice, the better you get. So it's also important that um, we are met halfway. So while we, we're, we're, we're being truthful, hardworking, honest, trustworthy, the client must also have all of these um, um, qualities as well, so that the, um, our, our, our affinities are alike. For a man who is not afraid of hard work and who is ever so passionate about all that he does, I wonder, how does this gentleman utilize his time and resources away from work? What does he love to eat, read, drive? I seek to find these out and more. I have a few quick fire questions for you. What do you love to eat? White rice. Okay, how would you describe your fashion style? Um, comfort. So what's your favorite uh, fashion brand to wear? It doesn't really matter to me. I just want it to look, I, I want to be comfortable in it. Okay. So what other CEOs do you currently look up to? The people who challenge me the most are actually um, women that I know and I have um, a close relationship with. Um, one of them is um, um, Renny Folauio, <clears throat> who continues to, to push limits and um, pursue African excellence as well, with um, Alara and Nock, two brands that um, she's pushing and um, continue to change the narrative about her country. I also have the highest admiration for Oga's wife, Mrs. Fashola, who, even though it's an NGO that she runs, but I, I, I don't know someone who can give so passionately. With regards to this industry that we exist in, I have um, the, the highest respect for people like um, Kenny, Ogunbe, and D1. Because whether you like it or not, they were the ones who led this movement. So what's your very favorite car to drive? I enjoy driving performance cars. Let me leave it at that. <laughs> Beautiful. So what's your favorite uh, travel destination? My favorite city is Lagos. OK, amazing. What's your favorite book of all time? One of the books that um, I've found um, really useful is um, Malcolm Gladwell's um, Outliers. Cool. So what book are you reading right now? Right now, sincerely, it's a book on leadership, um, the laws of leadership. I cannot tell you the name of the author, um, but um, I can show you the book. Um, but basically, it's um, a book about um, leadership and um, the different um, things that uh, a good leader needs to have. That's amazing. So finally, I would like to know, Idris, what makes you happy? I think the greatest happiness for me comes from the happiness of the people around me. So um, part of the culture here is um, a, a bond, uh, a friendship. So we're a family. So um, the best two places that I like to be are at home or at work. All right, thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs, Idris. And then I hope you're happy. I'm happy, man. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming, Mr. Fan. All right, man. Hi, my name is Idris Olorinimbe. You too can be an under 40 CEO.